Um, so Tony, you're the first professor of planetary health in the world. Um, so what is your focus and how does that feel? Look, it's, um, it's clearly a very ambitious title. And while I'm the first professor in the world, uh, I certainly don't want to be the last because we need lots of people involved. We define um, planetary health as uh, the state of human civilization and the health of natural systems on which it depends. And uh, that's why uh, soil and soil security is a really important uh, part of the planetary health effort. Is that part of your, your, one of your main focus? Your main focus? Well, my personal research focus is on urbanisation and its relationship to human health and well-being, as well as uh, the impact of urbanisation on natural systems. But when, here at the university, when we think about planetary health, we say that it's about safeguarding the health and well-being of current and future generations by uh, good stewardship of Earth's natural systems and rethinking the way we feed, move, house, power and care for the world. So when we're thinking about how we feed the world, then clearly we can't do that without thinking about the world's soils. But soils are not just important for food. They're, as we heard at the conference um, yesterday, um, there's, they are important from the perspective of food and fiber, of course, and their private um, uh, services that we get from soil. But there's also the public services, the public goods that we get, that we derive from nature, sometimes called ecosystem services, critical for human well-being. And uh, there's quite a lot of discussion about that here at the conference. I'll just ask you to hold, not to thump the table. Oh, what? I sorry. Know, I, don't, I know. Um, is, is, how much evidence is there that the health of the planet and, and the humans in it um, are being adversely affected by our deteriorating soils? Yes, look, that's a critical question. And I, the first thing I would say is that I don't think we know enough yet, but we do know some things that uh, we need to get on with implementing. There are three areas that um, Alex McBratney, who directs the Sydney Institute of Agriculture, and I have been uh, focusing on. Uh, the first is questions of pollution of soil. And it's clear that uh, pollution of soil, uh, when it gets into the, the broader food supply chain, then that will have human health impacts, but also uh, impacts on the health of other species, animals, species both domesticated and wild animals, um, plants, and indeed microorganisms. So that's one area that we're particularly interested in. A second area is about the nutrient profiles of soils and the importance of healthy soils for healthy food for people. That's uh, increasingly well understood, those relationships are very important. And the final area that we're particularly looking at as we embark on this work is uh, what we call the microbiome. Understanding the importance of all those microorganisms in soil uh, and their relationship to the health of people. And you know, when I grew up, uh, on a farm in New Zealand. We used to make mud pies all the time. We were always in the dirt. And uh, my family has very uh, low um, uh, uh, proportion of people with allergies. But um, some of my contemporaries uh, have, uh, who were raised in cities uh, uh, do seem to be more prone to these allergic uh, conditions. So there's lots of good guy microorganisms in soil that we need uh, to look after. And uh, I think uh, the whole way we think about microorganisms needs to change so that we focus at least as much on those good guys as we do on the pathogens uh, in our hospitals and the things that make people sick. Are you focusing on uh, some of the evidence that um, 
links the increase in allergies and childhood cancers even uh, with the depletion of nutrients in the food we eat because of our degraded soils. Yes, look, there's research happening all around the world now on these relationships. We have colleagues here at this meeting from the University of Adelaide who are working on the relationship between what they call the, the urban microbiome, you know, the, what we're exposed to in terms of um, microorganisms in the city, that many of them are related to soils in the city, and the uh, um, chronic uh, gastrointestinal diseases that uh, are, seem to be increasingly common. Uh, things like Crohn's disease, for example, and uh, things, diseases that we don't fully understand yet, but uh, they're doing innovative research on that, and that's just one example of research on these relationships. So, um, is there a risk that the public can be frightened? Look, look there is, and you know, we, we need to be careful, of course, but, uh, but I think the other thing we need to challenge is that uh, uh, it seems that people are frightened of dirt now. You know, getting uh, soil under the nails and that sort of thing, having your hands in the earth. You know, there's, um, for many young people who are now uh, raised in cities, they don't really get those opportunities in apartments and, um, and small townhouses necessarily. So we really need to encourage people to get their hands in the soil and uh, to see soil as a friend. Uh, rather than to be concerned about dirt and, uh, and getting dirty uh, when, when we've got our hands in the earth. That's lovely. Lovely.